But I mean, again, he, he doesn't know who Gabriel is, right? Because he didn't come from an Abrahamic faith. The people of Mecca were pagan. Quran has mentioned if this book was from other than God, they would have found in it many contradictions. If a book is without contradictions, that has no bearing on whether it comes from God or not. I've had phone books that are inerrant, but I certainly don't think God gave them. <laughs> that we believe without understanding. The brother asked a very important question that most of the scholars say that listening to music, watching movies, and most of the television programs, they're haram. So how can we have fun? Let me tell you, brother, at the outset, that having fun is permitted in Islam as long as the fun is halal fun. <laughs> that the standard narrative has holes. The prophet tells us because Satan or the devil sleeps over our nostrils. Those who oversleep and not pray Fajr on time, Satan urinates in their ears. I really do think Jesus was crucified and that he really was dead and buried. He, he thought that he was a son of God in the sense that he was specially chosen by God. I think Jesus really did think he was going to be the Messiah, the future king of Israel. I mean, that is after all why they crucified him. Hello everyone and peace of Christ all of you. Please invite your friends and let us have some good time together. Uh, uh, first, my Skype is open in case there's any Mohammedan would like to join us. You know, feel free. Uh, we will come you in case you want to call. Um, as you see the title, for Balut Vendor, Scam, they scam Muslims and they claim that they are people who knows Islam, even they claim that he knew Arabic, but it's you can tell anyone who speaks little Arabic, he knew that they are just a scam. <clears throat> you know what those, uh, what those Mohammedan, like this guy who spoke to me, he worked he work in Saudi Arabia, maybe as, you know, a guy who washed dishes, he learned how to say, how are you? And then when he spoke to me, he, you know, he want to say, Kaifa, Kaifa Haluk. And supposedly now he speaks Arabic. Uh, and you need to ask yourself why even he is doing that, you know, what is the purpose of this? Why he don't speak normally like all Filipinos? Because those scammers, you know, when they speak in such a way, they claim that they have knowledge. Like you see, we speak language now. <laughs> Uh, like you see now, we are the Muslims who speak the language of the Muslims. This is the whole point. Uh, but he don't know, he don't even know two words in Arabic. And they go after the Christians who they are soft. You can tell that those Christians in the Philippines, this group, they are nice Christian, which is something I don't really like, you know. Uh, I, I like you to be nice, but I don't like you to be soft. So they, always the Mohammedan, they choose a soft target, a person who is nice, a person who will not wipe the floor with their faces if they lie, a person who will not spank them when they lie, you know? So they choose always who they want to talk to. And this is why they were so upset because they wanted to have a soft target, not somebody will make them put them in the laundry machine and after two hours in the sun, the laundry machine, they will come full of wrinkles. This is if they were able to come anyway. Uh, but Christians need to learn <clears throat> that being a Christian does not mean being soft. Uh, one of you, he translated what this guy he was saying to them in the in in, in Skype. I don't understand what he was saying. He was saying to them as as a translation, saying, "You could not handle me, so you brought a Christian prince." You see, he just said what he what his fear is. Well, if they cannot handle you, they brought a Christian prince. Is that the reason? The same reason you are running away because you cannot handle a Christian prince? They are a bunch of cowards. They target. Christians who knows nothing about Islam. Those guys, they said, we know nothing. I, we have no idea what Islam is about. That's why he want to debate them about Islam, you know, because they know nothing about Islam.
the major number of Christians, they have no idea what Islam is about. It doesn't matter really how, and how much we teach and what we do. Still, they have no idea. And the reason for that, that in our churches, sadly, the priest, you know, the priest, our priest, they are just doing business. They go, you know, they do rituals. And they get paid for the ritual they do. There's no teaching. There's no real education. And then the Christian kid, he grew in this church. He learned nothing, really. I mean, he he learned how to say our father out of heaven, or they taught him how to say the rosary. But he doesn't know how to answer questions, because he never been asked questions. <laughs> so those, you know, those Filipinos, they are soft, because their churches did not teach them how to stand up for the faith. They taught them how to do rituals, but no education, zero education. In the other side, uh, hand, the Muslims, they are people who really do train their kids since an early age, since they are five years old, to attack the Christians and the Jews. So you have a person who grew up, he is maybe 30 years old now, but he know nothing about Islam. And you have a kid who in his fifth grade, he been taught how to attack Christianity. And you know, and most of people who claim to be Christians, they are really, uh, uh, many of them, they are shallow. Like here we have a person, he sent me a message in uh, in Skype. He is saying to me, I am from Sierra Leone, and uh, Jesus covered his head. So, look how silly and stupid this is in a conversation. This is the tradition, this is the Jewish tradition. So, what does that mean? So this is your education about Jesus, now he covered his head. So what if he don't cover his head? Jesus is not Jesus no more. This is the tradition. So, you know, uh, uh, some people who claim to be Christians, they are shallow, they are naive, they have zero education, and when they try to educate themselves, they focus on silly stuff. Here we go, Jesus, he covered his head. <laughs> uh, Sometimes you ask yourself, <clears throat> what is the size of the brain of some people? how small it is, how big it is. Seriously. Muhammad, he used to use three rocks to clean his ass. Do you use three rocks to clean your ass? Do any Muslim use that? No. Uh, but if you want to focus on the silly stuff, you know, you can, you can, you know. For us, we don't follow Jesus because he, you know, he, when he prayed, uh, he spoke to the Father, he put the cover, or he did not, who care? And if it's once mentioned, doesn't mean that Jesus always is wearing a cover in his head, but even if he do, this is a, tra this is a traditional clothes in the Middle East. You see, traditional clothes in the Middle East, women they cover and men they cover for a very simple reason, because of the dust. Not like now you go and you jump in your car, or if you're in Philippines, you take the jibney. This doesn't have nothing to do with the religious things. The roads are ugly. Dust is everywhere. The transportation is donkeys and horses. So you can imagine. So people, they cover their head uh, for a very simple reason, because if you don't, your hair will get so dirty, and people there, they don't take a shower every half hour. Uh, but if you are a silly person, you try to find a reason for it, like, you know, you know covering your head, it must be for uh, godly reason, you know? Anyway, my friend, God, God is the one who created you, and he created Adam and Eve without even clothing. No clothes. 
there's no cover for Eve, there's no cover for Adam, there's no even panty, no underwear. And God is fine with it, don't worry. He knew what he'd made for you. God is the one who made your private part and he knew what you have there. So wearing some clothes, you are not hiding anything from him. Uh, I can say like, you know, okay, somebody wanna go to pray in somewhere, it's not right to go inside a, a place of worship naked. But this is because uh, the tradition and because the way we are now, as an example, if you, if a person is, if a woman, she live in the jungles of uh, Amazon, all the tribes are naked, all of them, nobody wear any clothes. In this case, nobody see anyone naked, they don't see it because all of them, this is how they grow up. All their life, they are like this. So they don't see something strange there. But when everybody is wearing clothes and then somebody come wearing something not what they wear, so nakedness will be, uh, can be seen as a huge, as an example in Saudi Arabia, not long time ago, if a woman, she show her foot, it's a kind of a nakedness. Why? Because everybody wearing long dress and she's not allowed to show. Women, they have to wear gloves, even their fingers is nakedness. Today, that nakedness is gone. Saudi women, they are wearing bikini. They are fashion, uh, you know, girls. Uh, even they go to, you know, I, I saw in the news about some Saudi, they are being very, very, I mean, breaking all the, all the traditions of anything in Saudi Arabia, posting pictures of them, they are naked, etc. Uh, <clears throat> when you are silly, silly things will come from your mouth. When you are wise, wise things will come from your mouth. And that's why Jesus said, it is not what go inside your mouth make you dirty, it will come from your mouth. Silly people, they focus in clothing, uh, or what goes inside your mouth. But in the same time, they are the most filthy people ever. The most hypocrite. And I can give you an example. As, as an example, let us say there is a woman, she is a hooker. She is a professionally, she do it for a living. A woman, she is a hooker. And the woman, she is a practicing Islamic marriage. As an example, the wajah friend. The wajah friend. Okay, what is the wajah friend? You marry a person, he is a friend. And you have sex with benefit, that's all. They call it the wajah, so the police will not arrest them in, in Islamic countries. If they got them, you know, if they got them having sex together, they will say, oh, you know what, we are married. <laughs> the wajah friend. What does that mean exactly? It's very simple. You have a girl, you want to sleep with her, but you don't want... Uh, you know, you don't want any responsibility. You want just to have sex. You text her, do you want to meet today? For two hours, have some boom boom. You do boom boom, she go home, you go home. They have another zawaj, it's called zawaj al misyar. You go on a vacation, you go to Indonesia, you don't want to take your wife with you, maybe she is heavy. So what do you do? You speak to an Indonesian Muslim girl, you say to her, can you marry me for three weeks, I will be here, so I can have boom boom according to Allah. So what the Muhammadan they do, they practice all kind of prostitution, and they claim at the end of the day, they put the word before the prostitution they do, they call it marriage. However, not to forget to give to attention that the prostitution in Islam is very illegal. There is no punishment in Islam for prostitution, in case you do not know. Even the Quran, you see the Muslims in the time of Muhammad, they become the biggest pimp ever, to the point there is a verse in the Quran, 
speaking about it when the Muslim women they start complaining that their husbands they are forcing the slaves, the slaves into prostitution Muhammad did not say to them shame on you he never said this is against Allah teaching he said don't force your girls and those girls are the slave girls don't force your girls into prostitution you know to make money if they decided to not to do so so if they agree it's okay and if you force them Allah is all merciful <laughs> do you see it this is the Quran this is the Quran Uh, so prostitution is very legal it's part of the system and it's part of making money and sex slave business is always exists in Islamic religion if we can quote religion uh, if there is any Muslim he claimed to be an Ustaz I accuse you all of you to be a valued vendor you go to Saudi Arabia, you, re you learn two Arabic words, you come to Indonesia or Philippines, and you learn how to say Assalamu Alaikum, Marhaba, Kaifa Haluk, and that will make you supposedly a Sheikh. Like Sheikh Uthman, he do not know how to read the Quran, he called himself Sheikh. Right? You don't get. Don't mispresent us. Sabata, who? Aren't you the one who told me just two, two days ago that you are a Hindu? What happened to you? Now you're Christian, we don't get into dispute if you don't get go sticking you nose in everything. Sabatu, I told you in the comment section, if you come back here again and you try to be stupid, I will eat some beef, I will, open, I will buy a camera just for you. And I will make a beef steak and I will hurt your feeling. I mean, you are the last one who can talk about dispute. People who worship rats, they have a temple for rats. Don't dispute, okay? Don't let, you know, dispute. Go worship rats. I mean, you know, you, you people lost your mind. Rats, I never heard of somebody make a temple for rats and they think that rats are God. I mean, you see, the Muslims, they worship a shin. I can't let it go. Allah have a nice ass. I can't let it go. Uh, uh, they praise Muhammad as if he's God. I can't let it go. They are very sexual, very violent. I, you know, but you went farther, and you, 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 you made the rights. God. Hmm? I mean, how how uh, how rats became God? What happened? You have a temple even for dog. Temple for rat. And then you say you stick your nose in our we stick our nose wherever we want, and what you can do about it. You wanna say you know you will call your rat God and he will come after me? Human being, sometimes you ask yourself, do a human being even have a brain? I'm serious. Do a human being have a brain? When I saw that first time in TV, I said to myself, what happened to the, to the, to the person who called himself a human? I mean, the rat, they live in a house covered by marble. They have milk, but children, they cannot have milk, and they are dying from hunger in a very poor country. And then we convince people that this is, uh, those are gods. You know? I'm truly convinced, my friend. And look, this guy now, he is bending in front of Mr. Rat. He's praying to Mr. Rat. You know, do you see the rat down there? Look, the God is hard to be seen. So don't come here. You know, you, I think you are a Muslim, maybe. 
and you are trying to direct our topic to talk about the Hindus. But by the way, you and the Hindus are Muslim, they share a lot of stupid things together. Yeah, as an example, the God of Islam is the one who cannot resurrect people from death unless he use beef, the power of the cow. This is why the biggest chapter in the Quran is the chapter of the cow. Right? When the next debate will be with the Filipinos, my friend, did we have a first debate to have the second debate? They ran away, they are potatoes. What second debate? They were never there to debate me. <clears throat> uh, yeah, so, you know, I like to see the Christian is strong. If a Muslim, he shout at you, he try to intimidate you. This is the whole point. Islam is religion based on intimidation. If they could not intimidate you by the sword, will we intimidate you by shouting? So the first thing you need to know, that you are a nice Christian, that's wonderful. But don't allow them to intimidate you. Put them in their place immediately. Uh, we have Mr. Adam, he is so upset. And he using the a hole, uh, Adam. Hey, Adam, why are you upset? Adam, you see, I'm a person. I promise always, Muslim, whatever they say to me, I use it against Islam. And you are no exception. So look what Mr. Adam he said to us. And now Adam he will be sorry for that. He said, CP a hole will it twist everything to entertain his deluded guys. Okay, let me do some twist for you. I challenge you, Adam, to say I'm lying, that your prophet said that shaitan, he take care from your anus when you pray, and he don't stop until he see you fart, and he hear it, and he smell it. So, in other way, your prophet is saying that Adam, Mr. Adam, his a-hole is under the threat and under the attack of Satan. And here we notice that Satan don't attack the ears of the Muslims. He don't attack their brain because they don't have, you know, Adam, obviously, he don't have a brain. So Satan, he cannot attack his brain because it's missing. So what we do, we attack his a-hole. Adam, do you accept my challenge, my friend, to show you the hadith and you read it to everybody? And you tell me how to explain it. Are you there? I never heard of religion speaking about conspiracy have to do with the anus. Even your anus is under threat. There's conspiracy. Here we go. He just said again, don't talk a crap. Let us talk about a crap then. Is it true that your prophet, when he pee or poo poo, the earth open her mouth and swallow his crap and his poo poo? Adam? I told you, anything you say to me, I will bring you a story, will make you look like a dummy. Is it true what you Muslim you say, that when your prophet, he sat down to do poo-poo, and when the poo-poo coming down to the ground, before it touched the ground, the earth opened her mouth, and she ate the poo-poo of Allah? Yes or no, Adam? I challenge you to say uh, you're a liar. Just, just say it. <laughs> so anything you say to me, this is why they don't dare to debate me, because anything they say, I will show them something very embarrassing about their stupid religion. I mean, what kind of a religion this religion? They are worshipping even the poo-poo of Muhammad. Why the earth is swallowing the poo-poo of Muhammad? Any Muslim can explain to us, is it so yummy? Is it really so yummy? Did you taste it? How do you know? You guys, you were watching it? Like when Muhammad, he said, and the poop is coming, you Muslims are laying down in the ground, looking at the miracle. Huh? Why you don't call me, Adam? What do you think? Actually, even when Muhammad, he received the first, uh, he received uh, the Quran, the, the uh, Al-Fatiha, 
not the, not, not the first chapter, the Fatiha, which is the first chapter today in the Quran today. Uh, he received the Quran when he was doing poo poo. Can you believe it? Each time Muhammad he go out to do poo poo. The angel Jibreel appeared to him. Not he don't appear, but it was showing him. But he took. This is chapter one, and the Muslim they tried to make it look nicer. Uh, let us see Asbab al Nuzul. The book of Asbab al Nuzul. Asbab al Nuzul in Arabic means the reason for the verse to come down. It says here that each time the messenger of Allah. Uh, he come out, and in Arabic it says Tabarraza. Tabarraza is meant to, sh to do shit, excuse my language. So each time he go out to do shit, uh, he hear a voice whenever he went out, but they don't, you see the translation, the coward, they did not say he went out to do what? Uh, what do you mean whenever it says Tabarraza? So whenever he went out to do shit, he used to hear someone calling him, Oh Muhammad, and what Muhammad he do, he flee. A sign of a mental illness. If the angel is talking to Muhammad, why Muhammad is running? You tell me. But maybe because Muhammad now is really scared because he is doing poo poo. That can explain more. Uh, somebody saying uh, about uh, the poo poo. Uh, let me show you the reference. Yeah, the 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 poo poo, you know, the poo poo of the prophet disappear immediately. This is just an example of many books. The book of Imtaw al Isma to the Al Maqarizi, volume number five, page number three zero two. And I will translate to you, I will use Google Translation. It says, Oh Aisha, don't you know that whatever comes from the prophets, that Allah, he ordered the earth to swallow it. And then here it says, uh, from Umm Sa'ad and Aisha, she said, uh, Oh Rasulullah, you are going to do shit, but we don't see any of your shit. The other here means shit. Uh, Muhammad, he said, Oh Aisha, don't you know that the earth swallow what come out from the Prophet so you cannot see anything of it? <laughs> and then she continued here saying, Aisha, that is a dakhal al ghayat, dakhal fi ithrihi. So when he go inside, um, the, you know, to do poo poo, I go after him and I don't see anything and I smell only. Very nice smell. Let us translate, you know, uh, the page. And, you know, this is Google translation, and this is a Muslim website. So the Muhammad and they can say, oh, he's making things up, you see. Here it says Shia library, by the way, but this does not mean that the book is a Shia book. This is Shia library. We have all Islamic books, Sunni, Shia, whatever. So enjoying listening, the name of the book, enjoying listening, okay? by the Imam al-Makharizi, very number five, page number 302. And you will see the rest here about how Muhammad, when he entered the toilet, you know, uh, when she came after him, nothing, she see nothing. She saw asking, translation is not coming very good. So like when I come after you, after you come out from the toilet, after doing poo poo, I don't see anything there. So the prophet, he says, don't you know that the, the Allah, he ordered the earth to swallow what come out of the prophets? <laughs> and then here again, they are repeating the same thing about Muhammad. They are asking, how come Aisha, she is saying, how come when you do shit, we cannot find your shit? And actually she said in the end here, that when I go after him, I, I don't find his shit, yet I can smell a perfume. Well, for sure, the anus of a prophet Muhammad is very, very uh, holy, you know? And that can be explained because it's a special anus.
you know so the guy he don't do shit like us his shit is like you know the uh, the earth is swallow it because the earth is you know i mean there is imagine you are in the earth and the prophet himself now dumping his dump i mean the earth cannot wait for that you know this is your books are we making things up we are showing the reference we are showing you know let me pause the link actually i will i will shorten the link in a second and i will post it for you you can use google translation from your side and you can save it to your reference this is why those Mohammedan don't dare to debate me because whatever they say they are going to be you know people will laugh at them anything anything you say to me This is the link. You can use Google Translation from your side if you don't believe me. And this is a very Islamic website. And again, the books there doesn't mean that they are Shia book. This is Shia library, a huge internet library for Islamic books, for Sunni, Shia, all kinds of Islamic sect. No. Anyway... <clears throat> But you know, the, I mean, the, the funny is, uh, when Jesus was healing the blind, Muhammad was making miracle with shit. Hmm. This is what they are proud about. The prophet shit. We showed you in the other day the Muslim fighting over the poopoo of Aisha. Uh, I, not poopoo of Aisha, sorry. Poopoo of the camel of Aisha. I wish it was Aisha. Do we have any Mohammedan? He want to exchange some balut for knowledge? Who is an Ustaz? Who is an Ustaz? He called himself Ustaz. And uh, he want to share with us some balut. Uh, Anu Dumoni, he is saying, Christian Prince fan channel, have you made CP your idol in the place of Jesus in your heart? Do you love Muslims? Who are you? Who, who are deceived? CP is just a man doing what he believe God called him to. So, Mr. Anu, as long as you know that Jesus is doing what C, you know, CP doing what Jesus or God called him to do, why you are saying the Christian they make me an idol? Are you stupid? Are you stupid? Why do you see people here bowing down, worshiping me? Are you certified either? I mean, where do those people come from? I want to know. Where do those people come from? Do you, you know, made the uh, CP an idol? Don't come here, you know. Next time, come with your parents. Idiot. Why do you see people bowing down, calling me God? Do you see I'm posting a picture of me? I have wings. What's wrong with this dummy people? I mean, you see, sometimes I ask myself, did really God create those people? Sometimes they sound like they are counterfeit of a human being. Christian Prince fan. Did you make Christian Prince an idol for you? You forget what Jesus did to you? All what we do here is to prove that Jesus is God and that dummy you. And they are the same too. So they are coming here for knowledge. What does this have to do with making me idol? Don't get married, okay? Uh, <clears throat> there's, you know, I don't, I don't hate, uh, you know, like there is one thing I hate really. I, there's many things I don't hate. I mean, I don't mind even if I go and like I go hunting, I go in the mud, in the dirt, you sleep in the floor, uh, all those things. I don't, I don't have a phobia from dirt and germs and bacteria. But I have kind of phobia from stupidity. I hate it. It hurt.
crazy people. Do we have any Mohammedan? He is going to call us. You treat, you treat the speaking Filipino as if they were children. I think you are racist. Ah, 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 Sufyan. Sufyan, do you like to call me to tell you what Muhammad said about Asian? In front of everybody. I am the one who said I love Filipino people. Right, guys? They are very kind people, very nice people. And they asked me for help. I jumped to help them. So how that would make me racist. It is you, Muslims. Who forgot that you are a Filipinos and you put your nose in the ass of an Arab guy like me to worship me. Suddenly a Filipino guy, he don't want to speak in his language. He want to speak in an Arabic language, which he do not know. Kaifa haluk? Anta tayyib, anta tayyib? Mashallah, mashallah. He knew three words. You are the racist. And as long as you are talking about racism, let me show you what your filthy prophet said about the Asian people. Hmm? You want to see? Your prophet, he described the Asian people or they are the people of Gog and Magog. He make fun of their look, he make fun of their eyes, he make fun of their faces. Is that your prophet talking? Is it true? What your prophet said that Asian people, they have hammered faces? I never saw a, uh, an Asian person have a hammered faces. What does that mean? What, what does that mean, hammered faces? Hammered shield, their faces. How is that? And why he is saying that they are the evil one? And they are the people of Gog and Magog. Hmm? Are you there, Sofian? You are just a potato, my friend. You are a dummy potato. I feel sorry for you. Guys, do you hear the dog outside? Anybody hear the dog? Or well, my microphone is not uh, linking the voice of the dog. Do you hear a dog from your side parking? <clears throat> because I think he is, he, he has something to say. Your prophet is, is racist to everybody, even dogs, he does not leave them alone. What a dummy. This is the most racist, disgusting cult. Even Muhammad, he says that Allah, when he created the black people, he created them from the left shoulder of Adam. And he told them, you go to hell and I don't care. And the hadith, the admin will post it. We have Dawood saying, you support terrorist uh, uh, Putin. Uh, first, my friend, the one who support terrorist Putin, if he's a terrorist, is you Muslims. Let me show you. What the name of this coward son of Muta, the president of Shishenia, who is the puppy of Putin? What his name? <laughs> he said if uh, if if Putin he order me we in Shishenia we can occupy Ukraine in two days <laughs> son of Muta he is a proud to be the puppy of the Russian this is what you do the same as your Erdogan the son of Muta Erdogan all of you are the same I mean what kind of a, a person, this guy, the, the Russian, they occupy his country. They made the army of Shishenia, Shish Kebab. They destroyed the city of Grozny, which is the capital of Shishenia, you know. Uh, and still he is willing to die for the sake of his master. He said, if he, if, uh, if Putin, uh, uh, order me, order me. <laughs> Who is the one who supports you? A bunch of coward, dummy, 
You kiss the shoes of any Christian leader. His name is Putin, his name is Biden, all of you. All of you. Hmm? Potatoes. You know, send your army to Ukraine, they will eat you alive, Mr. Shishanian boy. Uh, yeah, they have a large Muslim population, but still they are a small number, very small number, you know, in that area, they have a small population. But what the point of the population, most of them, they are lady boys. Go to any place in the Philippines where they sell, let us say, uh, you want to fix your uh, watch, you want to fix your phone. In the same place, you'll find all of them they are Muslims who sell illegal stuff, including softwares. More than 80% of those who work in the stores, they are Muslims who they are lady boys. If you don't believe me, ask Filipinos. Everything is not legal as they are. Fake bags, fake watches, fake software, everything is, a, is, a, is a, considered as a theft. A Christian nation invading other nation, claiming profit, uh, that would, you know, uh, first of all, we aren't blaming your prophet for that. Your prophet already is dead. And we made him shish kebab long time ago. So we can't blame a dead man. It's you Muslims who do that. You blame anything to happen to you. If Dawood now he go home, and his wife, she told him that she have a baby, and then he go to the doctor, and he found that he cannot make babies, he will blame the Jews. And let me show you. This is your stupid prophet. Saying, your prophet is the one who blamed the, the dead. Domination, like your prophet. Your funny, silly, stupid prophet, he says, if not Eve, no woman betray her husband, but Eve is dead, long time ago. And based on this, your prophet, he's saying that Adam, he was married to a whore. She was a whore because she betrayed her husband. According to your prophet, and then he says, if not Bani Israel, which means children of Israel, no food, no meat would decay. And this is telling you how stupid your prophet. Let me tell you why. When Muhammad, he says, if no Eve, no woman betray her husband, Muhammad, he destroy his religion. Why? Because the stupid Quran says, al khabithatu lil khabithin wa tayyibatu lil tayyibin. What does that mean? Good women, they marry good men. And bad women, they marry bad men. <laughs> Chapter 24, verse number 26. Which means, you Muslims, you are a bunch of liars when you say that the Prophet of Allah, they marry good women. Because if Adam was a Prophet in Islam, and the Quran says, Allah, he make it a destiny, that bad women, they marry bad men, and good women, they marry good, good men. Destiny, it's a destiny. There's no question. And now we have a prophet of God, and not only that, later we found that Aisha, she is, she, she was betraying the prophet, and even the Quran says, وَقَدْ صَغَتْ أَيْمَانُهُمَا which means they became kuffar. And Allah, he threatened them to be divorced if they don't repent. Chapter 66, verse number 4. Do you see it? This is the wife of Muhammad, she is acting as a whore according to the Quran. And here you see how stupid the verse is. If Muhammad, he have a problem with his wife or his wives, then he the help is coming from Allah. You see that today the Muslim, they complain that those Catholic uh, uh, brothers from the Philippines, they says, you are a, is a Christian prince, is a Catholic? Yes, I, no, I don't, I'm not a Catholic. But who cares, I'm a Christian like them, you know? Uh, why you bring him, why you bring him, okay? Why you bring him, uh, okay? Look what happened to Muhammad. Muhammad is having a fight with the women. She is five foot tall. Muhammad, he cannot face his wife. So what he did? He said to her, if you go against me, guess who is supporting me? Guess who? What? Who? Surely Allah is his protector. Okay. From who? From Aisha. 
Who else? And after that, Jibril, oh, 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 the army is getting bigger. All of this to fight Aisha, two short women, they are five foot. And after that, all the righteous believers, Al-Qaeda, ISIS, Mujahideen, all of them. And all the angels are his support. All of this to fight two women, they are five foot tall. I mean, do you see how brave your prophet is? All this army, including Allah, is to fight two women. They are five foot tall. Do you see the coward Muhammad? He did not, he did not know how to stop them. So he threatened them that Allah is involved. Jibreel is involved. I mean, who is left? Who is left in this galaxy is not is there, you know? This is your, your religion is based on Allah, the angels, and the, everybody and every single believer. All of this to fight two women. Any Abdul? Uh, a Muhammadan saying, if you are a man, prove, you prove you have balls now, why you don't come to Indonesia, and we see you talk rubbish like this, he is now doing. Hey, my friend, uh, first of all, uh, I cannot prove to you that right now I have balls because the Prophet of Allah was playing with them. All his life he dreamed to have balls, he didn't know how they look like. So he asked me a favor, can I see them? I said, Muhammad, okay, but don't touch them. Are you there too much, too much? Do your prophet have balls? Isn't it your prophet, he said, that I was the most weak person in sex and I invoked my God Allah and he sent me a dish of Al-Kufayt. I ate it, I got the power of 40 men. Huh? What happened to the balls of your prophet? He sold them on eBay and now he's complaining? Don't bully me. You know, you, you are no match. You are no match. All of you, you are a potato. You can bully those nice Christians in the Philippines. With me here, I will make you, I will not make you balls because you are not a ball. You are a football. And why I need to go to Indonesia? Do you see how many millions of Indonesians they watch my videos every day? Go and see in Indonesian channels. Balls. Yeah, we saw your balls. Balut vendor. Do we have any Balut vendor who claim to be Ustaz? So we go to you, Saudi Arabia. We stay there for a few weeks. We come back and we say, Assalamu alaikum, mashallah. And then we claim to be an Ustaz and we grow a beard. And then we make a lot of money. Great business. Any Muhammadan? Hmm? Were you following Islam in the past? No, my friend. I'm too smart to be a Muslim for a second. This is a very stupid, this is a donkey head religion. Who in the world wanna believe that there is a God? If you believe in him, he will make your penis endless. That is not a that is not a reward, that is a penalty. I don't want anyone to change anything in that area. Just leave leave that thing alone. What how anyone can be a Muslim? You know, this is stupid, really. Christian country is feminine country. Yeah, we see who is the feminine. This is why you don't dare to call me. Because you are the female. All of you are afraid to lose your virginity if you call me. Otherwise, prove me wrong. Call. Let us see who is the feminine. And as long as you are talking about feminine, is it true that your prophet, he put eyeliner three times a day? And he pissed like a woman? And he said, I never receive Quran until I wear my wife's clothes? Who is the feminine? Hmm? Do you like to tell me why your prophet is make, putting makeup? He want to be pretty? And not only that, Muhammad, he used to color his hair red. He want to be blondie. The blondie Muhammad. When you are talking about feminine.
you know those people they you, you see if they saw a person he is that is say you know not all people are the same not all people are the same some people they have they are gifted they are very fast they are very educated uh, they they can really squeeze them and make them shish kebab in a second and there is a person he is nice he don't have he don't know much you know so this is the target they target they look they look always for someone they can do mockery off if you are a person who they cannot do that to they will stay in the chat look, look at them and today we showed you four ustas they were harassing those they called themselves ustas but they are they are they are valut vendor obviously so they were harassing those Christians because they are nice Christians. They don't attack anyone. They are a group of a prayer, etc. We want to prove to you Islam is the truth. Okay, and they are the one who chose the topic. The second they heard that Christian prince is in the other side, the drama started. Barut Vinder. None of them is an Ustaz. Do we have any Abdul? India is boiling under hijab trouble. You see, for me, I don't support this uh, hijab banning, you know, and I will explain to you why. If you want to support it, then you have to support banning all religious symbolic. So then not only the Muslims. If you do that, then you are fair. So if you forbid the Christians from taking a cross in their chest, showing it, showing it, appearing in the school, and you forget, if you forbid the Hindu from putting those signs in their head, you know, which is a religious symbolic, and you forbid the Muslim from wearing hijab, then I say, okay, you've been equal to everybody. But if this is a law only for Muslims, I say this is absolutely very wrong. No. <laughs> Uh, let's see. The guy is speaking to me in Arabic. I could not believe what this guy is saying to me. This Arabic is an Arabic of two years old kid. I was saying like what? Abdul, why you are talking like this? Speak to me in English. Mashallah, <laughs> mashallah. Do you speak? <laughs> And <laughs> tayyib, yeah, tayyib means tasty, tasty. Uh, you don't, I don't like you say anta tayyib. Are you tasty? Hmm. Uh, <clears throat> no, he don't want to impress me. He want to show the Filipinos that he is like we are in the same level, you know. Like this is a Christian prince, he's an Arab. Look at me. I will talk to him in Arabic now. Okay? Kaifa <laughs> haluk. Yeah, this is <laughs> this is was the point. You know, he wanna show in front of the Muslims. Look, look at me. Did you see how I spoke to him in Arabic? Did you see? Did you hear me saying to him, Kaifa haluk? Huh? And I said to him, Mashallah, in Arabic. And then I heard that even Muslim posting comment that I could not, I could not answer him in Arabic. <laughs> but uh, you know. <laughs> You know, actually, once I was in the Philippines and I was taking the elevator, take, you know, speaking in the phone. And you know, when you go in the elevator, especially if the elevator is not exposed to outside, you lose signal. So I was, you know, in the elevator speaking in Arabic. And there was a guy with me in the elevator. I finished talking because I, you know, I lost signal. So I, you know, hang up. I have no choice. The guy, he said to me, Assalamu Alaikum, because now he heard me speaking in Arabic. And obviously he's Abdul. So I said to him, Wa alaykum as -salam, Abdul. He said, MashaAllah, you know my name. <laughs> I 
I wish I have a camera. I'm really old. You know, I said to him, oh, Alaikum as salam Abdul. He said, MashaAllah, you know my name? And he was like surprised, like, what? How you know my name? You know? He don't... <laughs> Mashallah, <laughs> you know my name. <laughs> and then we start talking about, so he said to me, I am a Muslim brother like you. I said, I'm not a Muslim, I'm not stupid. So he said, he was shocked, you know, how, you know, and it was somehow rude, but you know, that's why I give it to him. Uh, so I said, do you want me to prove it to you that it's stupid to be a Muslim? So I changed my direction. We went down, me and him. We said like, there's a, there's a little park. We said, me and him. And I start showing him verses from the Quran. You know, we open the phone. He have the Quran with him, actually. He's supposed to be religious. And then he decided, he said to me, okay, I'm going to ask my sheikh. If this is true, I will leave Islam, I promise you. Uh, uh, a few days after, I saw him in the mall, and he was walking with the wife, and the wife wearing a burqa, you know, like, like, like in Saudi Arabia. He looked at me, and he, like, he moved his mouth, like, telling me, don't talk to me, you know, like that. I'm gonna, later, later, you know. <laughs> Abdul. Hmm. Do we have any Balut vendor? The first Balut vendor is Muhammad. Balut or Balut? Balut. Anyone? Um. Actually, you know, uh, talking about uh, about fear. Once, this was many years ago. Uh, once, you know, they I have some friends. They said to me, "Come on, every day you are live on air teaching about Islam. Come on, take a break." It was a New Year evening. They said, "Come and have a dinner with us." Uh, you know, they are they are married. They have their children. So, uh, and when I was there. They, they, they start begging me to open, to go to a Muslim chat room. Just enter, just enter, because the rest, they do not know what will happen if I go there. So some of them, they knew very well who I am, and the rest, they don't know. I said, no, no. I said, please, 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 you know. So anyway, so we went, we went to Paltok, and we went to a big Islamic chat room. I entered the chat room. The second, the Muhammadan, they saw my name. They start cursing, everybody put his hand up, like, because, you know, like, you have to take the microphone, you know, on your turn. We went, uh, we went in the chat room, it was maybe like 7 p.m., and we left the room. My name is there in Parto, but I'm not talking. We came back after the middle of the night. Still, they are calling me names, and the room became so big. Christian Prince! You coward, etc. You know, Allah will punish you. And they, okay, next. May Allah curse you and make a train go over you. Next, you know, and they, so they are lined up just cursing me. We went, we have fun, we ate, I came back. I said, let me log off from, you know, we did not log off. Let us go back and see what happened. We came back, the room became so big, and all of them, they are lined up and they are cursing me. And people, they die laughing. I just entered, I did not say anything. I did not even say anything, anything. I just saw, the, saw my name and you see the, the, the terror, you know? Uh, <laughs> shout out me, CP, I'm a big fan. My friend, it's not hot here. I do not need a fan for now, please. I need a hater. <laughs> You're welcome, my friend. I do not need fans, my friend. I want people to learn. I want people to be educated. We are not here seeking fan and this, this thing. We are here uh, trying to share, uh, uh, let's say, a defense system with the Christians who they are sadly unarmed because our churches, they left them alone. Our priests, they are not doing their job. They are just busy doing rituals. They charge you money for even a funeral. What we do here is for free, and it's real. And it can change your life and save your children. So we are not here to collect fans. I don't care for fans. To be honest with you, I wish I will hang up. I will never speak about Islam again. I, this is a wish I'm dreaming of. And actually, I tried before, you know? But then I find there's nobody can replace what I do. Until that day happened, 
I always stay. But if I ever see somebody he can do better than me or can do some like me, I would take a, you know, because this is not really fun for me. We are not here to collect fans. See, people, they were saying today, like, happy that you got 80,000. My other account is already a long time ago more than 80 in the, other, in the Arabian profit, but I'm not using it. Who care about the 80,000? My other account is bigger, long time ago. You know, this account was smaller, I switch here. So we are not really, I mean, the numbers of subscribers for me mean nothing. Uh, the important is how many people learn. <clears throat> um. <laughs> Anything else? And you know, I'm glad that now we have YouTube that they have this ability to record whatever we're saying. So if one day I'm not here no more, you never know, I might die tomorrow, I might die today, you never know. So uh, people, they will not be left alone. We left a lot of knowledge behind. We have books, we give them for free in many languages and more languages to come. And I'm writing more books too, you know. Uh, actually, I wanna write, um, I'm, I'm searching now for a monitor. Um, because you know, sitting for long in the in the behind in the in the chair is not fun. Sometimes, like you want to write, but you want to sit, uh, even like let us say, rest more, like in the bed. Uh, so I will buy a small monitor which I can connect next to my bed and can I still write my you know work in my books. <clears throat> the women in my country they walk naked. Okay, are you sure? Too much. Okay. If we ask you which is country, the biggest country for Billy Dancers, Mr. Too Much, Too Much, what you will say? What is the biggest country for Billy Dancing who they are wearing nothing? I will give you three, you know, America, France, Egypt. <laughs> Choose one, which one? And if we go right now in YouTube, I will do this in the front of your eyes, just to show you how stupid you are when you talk about naked people. Uh. <laughs> uh, I will type one word, which is ma'laya. Just one word. I will not search for anything. What we will find? Watch. Are you there, brother? Are you there, brother? Are you there, brother? Are you there, brother? Sexual dance. Women sitting in the top of each other. Hmm? I just typed only one word. I did not even type tons of stuff. There's things actually. If I show you, you will you will see how disgusting. Look, this woman sleeping in the other in the top of the other women. This is what they do. So you know the Muhammad when they talk about naked women, your woman is the naked one, and prostitution is number one business. You do. If you go actually to France, people who live in France, they knew who do who the business of a prostitution. Uh, let us see here. Uh, let us see. This guy maybe is a Muslim. <laughs> We will call him and see. Hello? Yes, my friend, are you a Muslim? Yes, I am. Okay, go ahead. What do you want to say to us? Is that? Huh? What did you say? 
What? Do you have any topic for discussion today? Your voice is very low, my friend. Can you speak louder? Do you have any topic for discussion today? I have any topic. Uh, well, yeah. Are you, are you a Filipino Muslim? Yes. Okay, yeah. that's wonderful. So today, I don't know if you saw, there's a, a four ustas. They claim to be ustas or sheikh. And then they run away as soon as they notice it's me who is going to debate with them. Maybe you can do better. I'm not going to ask you about anything. Can you tell me why Islam is from God? Is that why? Yeah. Why? Is, how do you know Islam is from the true God? So why? My question to you also is why do you doubt that? Because everything is wrong in Islam. As an example, your God did not know how the baby is created. Your God, you think that the sperm became a dead blood, and then that blood became a baby, which is a stupid. <laughs> Why are you, are you laughing at, at Why Allah? Are you laughing at Allah? I'm laughing at your, your, your ignorance. Okay, prove it. Here we go. I'm going to show you the verse. You want to show you the verses? Okay. All right. Can you see my YouTube in the screen? I cannot. Well, you need to see it so I can show you. You need to look so you can see what I am going to show you in the screen. Now, don't turn your camera on. Hey. I do not need your camera on. Go to my YouTube page. Go to my YouTube mm -hmm. page so you can see the verses. It says here, this is a chapter 23, verse number 14. Then we made the sperm. Then we made the sperm into a clot of a congealed blood. Do you know what congealed blood means? Is that you said which chapter? Chapter twenty-three, verse number fourteen. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So Allah he is saying here, not me. And this is your Muslim translation, which is a close to accuracy, not perfect. Then we made the sperm into a clot of a congealed blood. Do you know what congealed blood means? Clot of a congealed blood? It's dead blood. Is that is that best what? Huh? What did he say the verses? What was it say? It says it says congee the blood. It's in front of you. Chapter twenty three, verse fourteen. And you laugh. Are you laughing now? Okay. Are you still laughing? What kind of God you do not know how the baby is created? Have you ever heard you've been in school, right? Have you ever heard of somebody no. saying that a sperm no. become the blood and then the blood became a lump and then the lump became a bones and then the bones covered by flesh? This is what the Quran is saying. I never heard of a blood okay. which is dead is become become a human. Who, who said the blood is dead and it became a human? It says congeal the blood. Do you know what congeal the blood? Consumed. Ah. So so you are you are trying to tell us uh, exactly how a uh, uh, human being is made, right? I'm not the one to tell you how a human mind. being is made. It's a no, lot. Listen, listen. It 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 means <laughs> listen. It means you know exactly how much. How a human being is made like it's not you, me you know it's not me who's saying how a human being is be made it's your silly god saying that the, the, that the blood became a human listen yeah have you, you ever you, heard you have you ever heard have you ever heard of any mm -hmm. scientific book speaking about dead become a human sperm became blood which mm -hmm. is dead and then that dead blood became a human Hello. I can hear you. Yeah, Speaking. I want an answer. How this is how a stupid <laughs> thing like this happened? This is God saying how he created the baby. Have you ever heard of a God who do not know how the baby is made? Your God, I, 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 actually here, I think the your God, he saw a balut and he, he's speaking about baby creation as a balut. He broke an egg. <laughs> Yeah, this is the Balut God, Allah, you know. Your God is a Balut God, but the same as the Ustaz you have. Okay. Well, he, it's in front of you. Go and search in the dictionary. What, okay, what, so, so what congeal the blood, the clot, I, the clot I, I, of actually, congeal the blood? Mean? I actually... Okay, I I think this, this is my first time speaking to you. I actually tried several times to speak to you. And uh, I, I I never thought this, 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 like, your line is actually going through until today 
And right now, as I speak, I'm, I'm on a journey. So right now that I got to know that your line is active and you really hold the base, like... I am lying, you have to prove it. I'm, then... I'm showing you the reference in front of your eyes. I mean, look how silly you are, too much balut. I'm showing you the reference in no, front listen, of your listen, eyes. Listen, look, look, look. I'm listen. showing you I'm showing you the reference in front of your eyes. This is your Islamic website, and this is your Islamic translation. And then you said to me, I'm lying. So, I will seriously get, get back to you. Like, I will show you exactly why like you don't even need to hold any debate or like you speak silly you know that okay i'm not you see you thank you very anything. much you just said you, don't I, make you just said you just said i speak silly because so, i read so, the quran for you so when i read the quran for you i speak silly you refuse to answer that is, what I'm is it true is it true that the the the, 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 the sperm let's see, let's see who, let's see who is the city let's see who is the city come on I'm, I'm talking to you as a man speak to me I'm as a man a so is it true I'm in a car. is it true what your god said that the clot of a congealed blood became a baby who is silly here? Who is stupid? Be honest. Can you provide me right now any reference saying Ooh. that blood of a congealed blood did blood become a baby? I'll I surely, want to see that. Listen, I said I'll surely get back to you. Okay. Why well, you want to get, back, get back, back to me now? Now you can search right and Google now, right I'm now. My friend. So listen, listen. I really you are you 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 are a balud vendor like your stars, the same as Allah, the same as the Prophet. Search about you know the same time you spend to search about balut in the market. Search for the verse and tell me how in the world. Go to Google, search clot of congealed blood. What does that mean? It says dead blood. So how did how it is dead and it is a blood and that was the sperm. So like I said before, I will still have to get back to you and show you exactly what you're missing. Okay. My friend, I'm missing a lot. I want so, to get four wives. I want to go to Philippines. Convert to Islam and get four wives and practice uh, balut. You know, eight balut have sex. Eight balut have sex. You don't know what are you missing, brother? You have no idea what are you missing. Yeah, right. He hang up. No, he's a Filipino. I can't tell from his accent. You don't know what are you missing? You are missing a lot. Are you kidding me? You mean? Sex for Balut? Exchange? And now I know for sure you are lying. What the heck? <laughs> we are showing him. I mean, the Mohammedans are the most funny ever. You show them the reference in their website, in their Quran, in their translation, and then they say to you, you are lying. <laughs> that, is, that is science. <laughs> Look how fast the answer. He got me busted. You are lying. Like, Abdul, I'm showing you on screen. Okay, but you are lying. Now I know that you are really lying. Uh, what? You are lying. Uh, but, but how, how I did lie? I'm showing you the in front of you. You are lying. Okay. But shouldn't you prove me to be lying? Yeah, I mean, it doesn't matter. You are lying. Uh... All right, my friend. Do we have any other Muslim? He believe in the dead blood become a baby. Now look and think about it. That's mean. One day I used to be a sperm, and then I became a dead blood. Do you what? Do you see what dead blood can do to Allah? <laughs> I'm terrifying Allah, and He's inside the balut. Dead blood. Who in the world come with this such a science? No, I don't want to, you know, the, you know the, the kid, he want to go, he let him go. It's your line. We prove it. No. Your teacher will call me. And no. You see, there is a Muslim. He promised me. Actually, we were debating. He's a sheikh. This was a long time ago. Uh, he said, when I asked him a very tough question, he said, excuse me, I really apologize. I need to go to the bathroom, to the, to the washing room. I said, okay. And I have like, I don't know how many hundreds of people waiting. It's a debate between me and the sheikh. Then five minutes is gone. 10 minutes is gone. 15 minutes is gone. 
half hour is gone. He went to the bathroom, and since then he never come back. That was many years ago. So when you say to me that your sheikh is going to call me and end me, is that the same sheikh who went missing in the toilet seat? As you see, Abdul, I'm here every day. Where is your sheikh? What an embarrassment. The guy, he went to the, to, to the bathroom to take, a, to, to take a leak. He never came back until now. This was more than maybe 12 years ago. So if that is the sheikh, I would be happy to hear that he's okay. We, we were worried about him. Hmm? The actual word for balut is badut. I don't know that. But this is what they use in, uh, in Philippines. Me, myself, I'm not expert with languages. <clears throat> Do we have any Abdul? Once I was debating with a guy, he claimed, you know, I wish we can go uh, get back all those uh, debates. At that time, we have limited software. It's not like now YouTube, it's recorded automatically and you know, so it was like a you know, chat room. Uh, once I was debating with a, with a shake and then suddenly, a woman, she entered the room. She starts screaming at him. And then she took the microphone from the guy. She said to me, you are practicing your manhood on a kid. My husband is not a match for you. He go to sleep, he talk about you. He speaking about, he say your name and he's asleep. Leave my husband alone. What the heck? So the guy, he talked to me once before or twice. And now he go to bed, sleep next to his wife. He starts saying in his dream, Christian Prince, Christian Prince, you know. So she said to me, leave my husband alone. He is no match for you. He is going to have heart attack because of you. I will hold you responsible. You know, and the, and the guy, he was saying to her, stop, stop. Like, you know. <laughs> so I said to him, is it true that you say my name when you are asleep? He said, you know, you know, it's a dream. You cannot control your dreams. So I said, okay, can you tell us the dream you see? <laughs> oh, boy. <clears throat> the guy, he see dreams. I have nothing dirty. Um, could you please explain the hadith Qudsi 20 how uh, come Islamic paradise open only in Monday well you know because obviously Muhammad he used to be a person who we, are, who we work in wear cut business <laughs> I mean how in the world I can explain that to you, my friend. <laughs> Crazy. Like, according to Muhammad, that the heaven opened Monday and Thursday. You know, Monday and Thursday. And then you ask yourself, I mean, how, why in the world this heaven open in two days a week only? What about the rest? What happened? <laughs> this remind me, of Jordan, you know, Jordan, it's a, a very poor country. And the American Jesus give them $4 billion assistance, army assistant alone, and they are the one, the American and the Israeli is the one who pay for the salary, almost for everyone who live in the country. Uh, those people, because they don't have enough uh, people for the borders, <clears throat> especially a few years ago, they were like almost the country bankrupt. So they open the borders only uh, one or two days a week. And uh, they have like one police or two policemen in the whole custom area. <laughs> so your passport, you know, this is what a friend, he told me. Your passport will be, will be taken to uh, like three, four hours until it's stamped because there's only one or two police. 
And here we go. This is Muhammad. Obviously, Allah he have a shorten shortage in the uh, you know in the police in the gate, so he cannot really uh, stamp your passport. And by the way, in case you do not know, uh, a Muslim man when he want to go to heaven, Allah will give him a passport. And in that passport, it says his privilege, which mean it's like a visa, what you can do with this passport. So you have a certain location you can go to. The Muslim heaven have many levels. Um, there's 100 level. So your passport will tell you in which floor you will be. And based on that, based on the passport too, what is your reward? Like it's going to be written there how many women you will have sex with, how many boys, uh, you know, uh, all, all the all the privilege in the passport. Actually, you can hear that when, uh, you remember the video, it's called The Description of Paradise, the one we played for you from the Dean Show? He will mention that to you. You know, when you go to heaven, there's a passport. <clears throat> Very mad religion, what you can say. I mean, this guy, obviously, he's, he's mental. He say whatever he want. And those Muhammad, and nobody have a brain to, to, to ask a question. Why in the world the heaven will open two days a week? And why Monday and Thursday? What about Friday? I thought Friday is a, a special day for Muhammad, you know? Well, thank you for the description of Balut. I believe all those things about Balut and those things, all those food, which is supposed to be for a sexual purpose, I believe they are stupid, you know, because the egg, the egg, if it become a chick or not yet, it's still the same egg, nothing change, nothing, nothing change. So it's a stupid to believe in such a belief. But, you know, people, they... Uh, uh, Arwa, uh, you don't uh, you don't respect us. You are a liar. Isn't it the Quran says? Yet fa'una jizya an yadin wahum sagirun. So why you lie? You respect us since when? If you respect us truly, go and take all the verses in the Quran, calling us pigs, monkeys, kuffar, najis, worst of the creatures, worst of the animals, and then you come here and you say to me. We respect you. You are a liar. Actually, Islam forbid you from respecting us. Do we have any Mohammedan? This guy, he is not even a Muslim. He keep calling. Let me block him. Yeah, you know, they are very respectful people. Like now, because they need Israel, they start kissing the, uh, the, the, the hand of the Jews. Emirat need protection, Saudi Arabia need protection from Iran, etc. Suddenly now they are in love with the Jews and we are family. Suddenly, you know, suddenly. You know, hypocrites. The most hypocrite religion ever. <coughs> Any, any Mohammedan? Uh, here, here we go, you know, Arwa, I just said to her, this is what your Quran teaching, she called me haqir, haqud, you know, she called me filthy. <laughs> okay, Arwa, why you don't call me? And I will make you read it. And everybody will laugh at you. You are a coward, and you are a liar. Let us go then, here we go. We start from the Quran. The Quran says, take not Christians and Jews as a friends. Chapter 5, verse number 51. But forget about this one. The Quran says that Allah will spread hatred between the Christians. Hatred. Do you respect somebody when it spread hatred between you and your kids or your family? If you respect us, 
You don't go and spread hatred between us. This is your faithy God. Chapter 5, verse 14. Do you see it? I will spread hatred, enmity, and hatred between them until the day of judgment. This is your satanic God, Allah. We continue. The Quran says that you do not take a Christians or Jews as a friends unless you are lying to them. And the one who honor them, the one what? The one who honor them, he have no connection to Allah. And he should be killed. Is that your Quran and this is your translation and this is Ibn Abbas or this is something we made? Do you see it? Are well a coward? If a Muslim, he is seeking might and honor by taking the hypocrite, disbelievers, like a Muslim, they call us hypocrite, can you believe it? When the same verse teaching them how to be hypocrite, how to lie to us, taking the disbelievers as a friends, the one who do that, he have no connection with Allah. He has no honor, mercy or protection from Allah, which means he Muslim, if he is a Muslim, he take us for me. As a friend, he should be killed. His wife should be raped. But if you guard yourself against them, save yourself from them by speaking to them in a friendly way toward them with while your heart dislike this this is your religion do you see it so you are a potato liar now we go to different verse in the quran not only the quran teach muslim to lie to us to fool us which prove that islam is a satanic cult we go in the Quran, we find that the Muslims even they cannot take their own families as a friend. Their own parents. The Quran says, you will not find one of the Muslim, of those who believe in Allah and the last day, and he's a prophet, being kind and nice to those who resist Islam even if they are their fathers, their sons, and their brothers. Do you see it, Arwa? Who is the liar? Chapter 58, verse number 12. Let us continue. We are not done. The Quran claim that anyone is not a Muslim is filthy dirty. And you said you respect us. So if I call you filthy now, I'm respecting you according to your religion this is what you are saying those who they are non-believers and mushrikeen not the pagans doesn't say that they are any clean they are filthy they are najis and hearing to ask yourself based on this muhammad himself is a son of a filthy man because his father was not a muslim neither his mother shall we continue hmm. the quran confirm or consider non-muslims are animals Not only they are the same as the animals, they are even worse. Chapter 7, verse 179. Chapter 25, verse number 44. Are you there, Arwa? You said that you Muslim respect Christians. And you call us animals. And they are even worse. Arwa is dead. Because if Arwa, she posts one more thing, I will show way more things. And not to forget racism against black people, racism against non-Arab, all the garbage Muhammad he come with. Islam, we are laughing at it. It's you who is scared of Islam to the point you don't want Islam to be in your country. Arwa, you are a coward and you don't want Islam. Islam have no place here. We conquered Islam long time ago. None of you even follow Islam. None of you. Go to Saudi Arabia and see the bikini. Go to Saudi Arabia and see the music. Entertainment. Isn't it your prophet he forbid music? Is it the Quran forbid it? All of you have iPhones, music, belly dancing, number one people who search for sex and porn. 
And then you say to me, Islam is scaring us. We are laughing at Islam. As you see, your prophet was the first hypocrite. It is you who is scared of Islam because which country is practicing Islam anyway? If you are not scared of Islam yourself, why you don't practice Islam in your country? Where is Islam is a practice now? In Saudi Arabia? Nobody want to practice Islam. Not a single Muslim. I just saw in the news that as uh, Indonesian Ustaz will give us the link. Maybe we can make a topic about it because they are following the steps of their prophet. Any Muhammadan? The truth is, Islam fear Christians and fear Christianity. This is why you are terrified to let us even preach the gospel in your country. This is who have fear, not us. Here you come, a Muslim, he go on the street, he speak about religion, we don't kill him. Nobody will hurt him. Because we don't fear Islam, but you are the one who fear us. You are terrified. If somebody leaves Islam, you, you, know, you torture him, you torture his family. You do everything to stop it, because you are living in fear. And don't worry, Islam is dead already, and your prophet, he prophesy, if he is a prophet to you, you should listen, he said Islam will go back the same as a snake going into its hole. Arwa, maybe she is not a female, she is a she-male. That's why she don't dare to call me. Muhammad, he said, Islam start as a small and will end as a small. And now we see the Muslims, they are screaming all over the place. Research show that. Crying that Muslims are leaving Islam by millions. Don't you know the news? Who is as afraid? Terrified. Research show that over 100,000 Muslims leave Islam every single year. Our youth are full of doubt. And there is Muslim youth leaving Islam. 24% of Muslim youth are leaving Islam. How does it become apostate? They become apostate. They become apostate. They become apostate. If you have something serious to say, just say it. If you don't, get lost. We don't have time for kids. You are the one who is scared, and we are the one who protect your Kaaba. If your God, Allah, is true, he will protect the Kaaba. When Al-Qurmuti, he come and he destroy the Kaaba, he took the black stone, he make it a purple stone for 21 years. The guy, he was pissing on your black stone, the holy stone, for 21 years, and Allah could not get it back. And then the Muslim, they have to pay the guy money. They collected a lot of money to bring the black stone. They have a Kaaba without the black stone. And not only that, the guy, when he destroyed the Kaaba, he, he shout, he says, where are you, Allah? Where is your, the, the bird? You know, there is a verse, a chapter in the Quran called the chapter of the elephant, claiming that Allah, he sent birds to destroy the one who attacked the Kaaba. Here we go. The guy, he said, okay, here we go. Where is your birds? Where is your birds? The birds of Allah never show up. It's a fraud. The Houthi, the Shia, they are shelling Saudi Arabia. We don't see the birds of Allah. The one is stopping them is the Patriot of the American and the Israeli missile system, defense system. You are not Arwa, you are Awra. Do we have uh, any brave Muslim? You know, you do not know what to say to those Muslims. If you say anything, they get insulted. If you say brave Muslim, they say he's insulting us. If you say coward Muslim, he will say you're insulting us. If I say decent Muslim, they will say you're insulting us. If I say a liar, they will say you're... It doesn't matter what you say. It's just to avoid speaking to debating me. 
And in the best scenario to get out of all of this, like they are out of option, they say, show us your face. You will become a apostate. You will become what? <laughs> apostate. Uh, do we have any Muhammadan? He can help us about apostate. Uh, what is that here now? Customize YouTube. What? Hold on. No, we don't want to customize YouTube. Your channel is about to become apostate. In America, this is the last thing. Twenty-three percent are becoming apostate. In America, then twenty-three. Did he say in America? Uh, that must be because of me then. If he say Indonesia, it must be me too. If he say Pakistan, it must be me too. <laughs> uh, Arura, I warn you many times, if you want to come here, you want to speak like a lady, you are welcome. You want to act like a kid, teenage, I will block you. Here we go, I just block you. Are you happy? Do we have any brave Muslim? You want to help to stop the Muslim from being apostate? My volume is low. Is that correct, guys? Is it, is it true that my volume in my microphone is low? I don't think so. I think it's from your side. How is my Skype guy? I mean, how, how is my voice in the microphone? Is it low? Somebody's saying my voice is low. <clears throat> yeah, I think from your side. No, actually, this microphone, I can tell it's very good. You know? I mean, it's expensive, but I think it's worth it. It, it, uh, it, it, it doesn't collect any noise, anything. Uh, forget about this, Eliza, please. You know, there's no need to speak in a, about her in a personal matter. Attack the idea, not the person. If I see that she is going out of line, I will block her. Don't worry. Yeah, and actually, when I bought this microphone in Amazon, it says that this microphone, you, you know, it's it understands uh, Spanish, Portuguese, uh, German, Chinese. So, like I talk to you now, you you know, from your side, even if you are Spanish, you understand. You know, that's what they said in the website. That's why I bought it. Like now, I do not know Arabic, and that's why I bought it. You know. So I speak in English, Muslim, they hear me Arabic, and they think I know Arabic. Alhamdulillah. You know? Like here in front of me, I have options. You choose which language, you know? You say Arabic, like I speak gibberish, you hear Arabic. You remember the Muslim guy who said to him about, uh, about the ant she is talking, he said Allah was translating what the ant she said? <laughs> Allah translating the... So we uh, like we went to the time where the Muslim they are desperate to answer to the, to the point where they say that the end, Allah translating the end. So the Quran now is not made in Arabic; is made in the end language, and Allah translating the end <laughs> to Arabic. <laughs> Abdul, how the end? You know, it's, yeah, but you know the end. She doesn't speak Arabic, does she? I said I don't know. I said okay, see. So Allah, He was translating with the end. She said, "Genius." You know, the end. She was talking, and Allah was translating. And who can translate better than Allah? You know, come on, face it. Nobody. <laughs> the end she was saying I never heard of such a stupid thing 
but you know, if you if you have uh, there is a book. It's called the Legion of the Jews. It's made in the 1900. It's a very old book, more than a hundred year old. That's why it's for free legally. I think uh, you can download it from the internet. You can search it. You will find there. There's tons of stories, which is in the Quran today. It's coming from what it's called the legions of the Jews. Those are stories the Jews they tell their kids before they sleep about Suleiman have a flying horse. He have uh, a flying carpet. He controlled the kingdom by a ring. Uh, he have uh, he controlled uh, uh, creatures like the genie. Uh, you know, Suleiman once he lost his uh, ring and then he found it inside the fish. Mm. Any Mohammedan? No worry, if you are a Muhammad and you speak the language of the ants, Allah will translate. Anyone? Do we have any Sheikh Ustaz from Indonesia or from uh, Philippines? Yeah, all those stories like Suleiman, he died and he was dead for a year, you know. Oh, I just received a message from Eliza. She is saying, I think I will leave Islam, try to find Jesus. Okay, bye. Well, we are happy for you. This is what Eliza, she just said to me. This is just sent to me now, 10.51. I think I will leave Islam and try to find Jesus. All right. We hope so. We will pray for you. <clears throat> Any Muhammadan? You know, like uh, those are a true story, by the way. I remember me myself once. I, I bought a fish and I opened the belly of the fish. I found iPhone 13. And that was long time ago, before even cell phone was exist. And then I said to myself, what this thing does? Because I don't know what phone at that time, you know? So like I hit, I start like hitting the thing and then oops, like turn on. I get scared. I thought like a genie would come. This is a true story by the way, this is a true story. It's true I don't have a witness for it. But who need a witness if you are a prophet? There's no need for a witness. I mean, this cult, this religion, you need four witnesses, and they have to see the private part of the male going inside the private part of the women to prove adultery. Four, and they have to see the penis going in and out. But a prophet, he tells stories. Nobody knows where he got them from. There's no need for a witness. You find money sometimes inside the fish? Yeah. Well, I don't know. I have a friend. He opened uh, the, you know, the fish. He found the, the keys of his car, which was lost. You know? And then I, we were wondering how this happened. Uh, it happened. This is a true story, by the way. I swear by Allah. Uh, the guy who was walking in the seaside, and then his keys dropped in the ocean, brother. And then a uh, uh, fish ate uh, the keys uh, because they have like a, they are, the hanger of it looked like a candy. And then the fish was eaten by a shark. And then the shark was eaten by a whale. And then uh, this guy, he received as a gift from his family for, uh, for birthday, a whale in the mail. So he opened the mailbox, he found the whale, he took the whale to the kitchen, and he cut the whale, he found first the shark, then he cut the shark inside the whale, you know, and then inside the shark he found the fish. Then he cut the fish, and then he found the keys, all right? 
So like it was like a box inside box inside the box inside the box, you know. So first is whale, for a second is shark, and I don't know if there's more. And what this is what he said to me. I think he was trying to make the story short, and he swear to me that this is a true story. If the Muslim believe in those stories, there why they don't believe in the story I just told? Well, one of the funny part of those stories that the women who um, Uh, Solomon he married Solomon uh, he met with a guy and the guy he told him why uh, are you married he said to him no so he said to him the, the, man, the man he said why you are not married uh, Solomon he says I don't know like I need to find the women really I like and then now this is depending the the one who is telling the one is telling the story. Some they say this is for Solomon, some they say for someone else. Anyway, so why you are not married? Uh, you know, uh, I have a, I, I am a minister. Uh, yeah, in this part of the story here, it's it's about somebody supposed to he is a minister of a king, and this king is a womanizer. So this king, uh, uh, when his ministers they marry. He forced them to send their wives to sleep with her, especially if she is a beautiful woman. So this minister, he didn't want to sleep, is a, marry a woman, she is a beautiful. The guy, he said to him, I have my daughter. She is half a human, half genie. Marry her. The guy, he married the women. And then the king, he learned about the woman. She is very beautiful because she is half a human, half genie. So he went to the house of this woman to rape her. This woman, she is half a genie, half woman, half a human. She told her, she told him, well, you cannot enter my house with your army. I mean, why do you need the army to provide protection? Are you a coward? Enter alone. And when he entered alone, she took her high heels and she, sla she slaughtered him by her shoe. If you don't believe me, I can show you the reference. And here this is why you have to take seriously the women wearing high heels. This is a story written in Islamic books that the women she killed the king by her high heels. So do you see what women can do with high heels? I'm, I'm telling you, they, are, they don't wear them for decoration. You know, some men, they are naive. They think those women, they wear high heels, just okay. You know, they wanna be taller or whatever. They think it's nicer, but in reality, they want to cut your throat, you know? They are waiting for opportunity. You make a mistake, you're... so they have nails, they have higher nails, high heels, you know? So like high nails, higher heels, that's okay, makes sense. High nails, high heels, okay. So they have high nails, high heels, and they cut your throat, and they might cut other stuff too, you never know. It's going to be too late by the time you find out what they cut from you. Uh... And if you don't believe me, if you are a Muslim, call me. I will make you read the story in front of everybody. I'm not going to say anything. I will give you the reference. It's in English, and I will make you read it. Anyone? <laughs> no, I don't watch James Bond movies. <laughs> this is Muhammad movies. Muslim books is the most hilarious, stupid books ever. You cannot believe what is written there. You might think I'm making, you know, like just making fun. Yeah, let, let me not to open it now, this reference, because if we open it, we will stay here for the coming three hours. Because the story is so long and it's so funny. Maybe next time or, you know, some other time. Well, I'm not scared of anything, but you have to learn from other people, right? Look what happened to Muhammad when his wives, like, did you ask yourself when Muhammad, he was fighting with his two wives, Hafsa and Aisha, why he needed the help of Allah, Jibreel, etc. All the Muslims, all the angels to support him, and they are two women. Do you think he is just as scared of them because they are two women? No. They have long nails, I guarantee you, and they were wearing high heels. Aisha, she was a fashion girl, you know? 
So Muhammad, he knew that he is in danger. The second he noticed that those women are looking at him in such a way, he said to Nadim, stop. Do you know who's going to stand with me? Who is my protector? Look, it's not me who said the word protector. Look, read. Truly, Allah is his protector. Protector. We are talking about protection. And you are telling me women are not dangerous? I mean, this guy is a terrorist, literally. He is the head of the terrorist. And now he is seeking protection from Allah and Jibreel and the angels and all Al-Qaeda and ISIS from the nails and the heels of the women. This is, you have to take this seriously, you know? Those women, I'm, I'm telling you, I'm telling you. You know, I swear by Allah. <laughs> now all the men, they go to bed, those married ones. They sleep next to their wife and he look at her. Did she sleep yet? He don't know. He will not sleep until he is sure she is asleep, just for his safety and security. Mm. <clears throat> yeah. <laughs> hey, honey, did you sleep? Uh, no. Oh, okay. Why? You know, nothing, nothing. You know, I think it's time for you to sleep. Why you are keep asking me every five minutes if I slept or not? Well, I mean, want to be sure you're okay, you know, like, okay. And uh, can you put your hands under the blanket? What's wrong? Why you want my hand in the blanket? Hey, just, you know, to be sure that your hands, they are, you know, they are warm, you know. Don't worry, my hands is okay. <laughs> okay, uh, did you take off your shoes before you go to bed? Why you are asking me about my shoes? For sure I took them off. Did you put them next to your head or they are under the, the bed? Why you want to put the shoes next to my head? I mean, the guy is paranoid now. He's worried about his security, about his life. Future is involved. Have you ever heard of a God he involved in a fight between a man and his two wives? And then he says, all those people, they are protecting him. What is that? I mean, this is the most silly, stupid thing. You know, the Quran, the way I see it, is the same as a Facebook at that time. Muhammad, anything happened, he make a verse, he make it Quran, even if it's the most silly, stupid thing. So imagine today, you have a guy, he claimed to be a prophet. He go, he posts in Facebook, making a threat to his two wives who live with him in the same house. If you don't stop, Allah is my protector. All my fan in Facebook, in Twitter, they will support me. How do, <coughs> sorry, how do Arab Christians call God? Well, Arab Christians, they are living under Islamic occupation for 1400 years, so one of the words they use is Allah. But all the Christians there, they don't believe in Allah, the God of Islam. They use it as a word meaning God. However, for me, I reject that word because it's not part, part of our Bible. Even in the Arabic translation, they use the word Allah, but this is a false translation. Allah is not even the name of the God, the Muslim. It is al la al la Al is a word meaning God. La is the name of the God. La, Al, in the Arabic today, means the. The, that will make it the la But if you go deep, if you want to study more, deeper, you will find that Al is a word meaning God. <laughs> Uh, of course, the word God in Arabic is Allah. That is false. Even your God, Allah, in himself, in Arabic, in the Quran, he used many other words that have nothing to do with Allah, which is a story from the Aramaic. As an example, Rabb, Rabbi. Those have nothing to do with God. As an example, your stupid God, he says, Jibreel. Jibreel, it's a Gebra, Eel. Il is the word meaning God. So your stupid God, he stole from the Bible names. He put them in your Quran. And now he exposed himself by copying the names which don't belong to him. If we ask the Muslims, Allah have 99, name, 99 names. Is one of them is Il? They will say no. No. So Gabriel, Mikael, Israfil, Ishmael, all the Israel, all prove that Allah is not the God of those people. So the stupid you, you think that, of course, the word 
in Arabic for God is Allah because you are a certified idiot because Allah for the Muslim is not a word mean God it is a name of God again you are a donkey otherwise if you if Allah mean God then the Shahada should be saying there's no Allah but Allah because you didn't show that you say that the word Allah is God but you don't say that you say there's no God but Allah La ilah illa Allah. So ilah is just a word il, mean God. Ilah, the, the he at the end is just a music. It's not really part of it. But by time they add it as writing. So ilah, il, is God. So there's no il but God. Who is God? Who is that God? Is Allah. You are a dummy again. Secondly, we don't differentiate with Muslim because of the name. Who care about the name of your God? It's a stupid God anyway. You call him Allah, you call him Ar-Rahman. Even the, even the Arab, they make fun of Muhammad. They ask him, why you keep changing the name of your God? Why you keep changing the name of your God? Muhammad, he keep changing. Some he call him Allah, sometimes he call him Ar-Rahman. Sometimes he call him Ar-Rahim. So Muhammad, in order to solve this problem, he made a verse saying, we call him, you call him Allah, or you call him Ar-Rahman. All the beautiful names belong to Allah. Uh, terminate, I terminated you and Sheikh Uthman, and already we are laughing at Sheikh Uthman. Here we go. This is your Sheikh Uthman saying that Muhammad is not Abrahamic. This guy, without even, he don't dare to talk to me for sure. And we, you know, we show everybody. He do not even know how to <laughs> write a word in the Quran. He have to look at the Quran to write it. And then this guy, he is the one who help us. Now, anytime a Muslim, he says to me that Muhammad is Abrahamic, I play Sheikh Uthman. I mean, again, he, he doesn't know who Gabriel is, right? Because he didn't come from an Abrahamic faith. The people of Mecca were pagan. Did you hear it? So you're Sheikh Uthman. He got all the lies of the Muhammad for all those years busted. He is not coming from Abrahamic faith. He do not know even who is Gabriel. And he is coming from a pagan, Quraysh are pagan. What more I want? And you are telling me debate Sheikh Uthman, here we go. What about you call him and put him with me online? Give me his Skype, I will call him right now so we can laugh. But he will never dare. There is no meaning for the word God in Arabic. Allah is not a meaning. They don't know even what Allah means. In the, in the Quran, if you go to chapter 1, verse number 2, and one, verse number 1 and verse number 2, you will see here it says, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. You will notice that here Allah doesn't look the same as this Allah. There is one letter is missing in the beginning. Why? You cannot take letters from from names, right? The names will stay the same. You can delete letters from names only if they are not part of the word. Do you agree? Only if they are not part of the word, you can take them off. So uh, you will see in the second verse, ter uh, terminate, terminate. Just go. You know, you are just a kid like your prophet and like Sheikh Uthman, son of Muta. You will see here. Instead of crying about debating him, well, why you don't ask him? Give me your Skype, I will call you. Wear a mask, why you don't need a mask? You know, you wear a mask, son of Muta. You wear the mask. You force your wife to wear a mask. Because you're afraid that your wife, she is going to go to sleep around. Because you're Muslim, you don't trust your women. You think that your wife, she is a whore. You force her to wear burqa because you think the second she show her face, she will jump to other guy. You have no trust, you have no honor, and you have no respect to yourself. That's why you need to watch over your wife. Your wife, she needs a guardian, as if she is a, you know, a goat. Because you don't have a trust in your wife. Why? Because you follow a prophet. He went to the house of his own son, and he slept with his own son wife. So in front of you, you see Allah. This is Allah here. And this is Li Lah. And this is telling you what the name is.
If Allah is the name of the God of Muslim, we cannot take any letters from it. Here what we see in the front of us is only li la. Now maybe for you, you do not know Arabic, doesn't make too much difference, but you will notice that between the two, there's a letter is missing. Let me make an arrow so you can see the difference. Do you see this letter here in the beginning of the word? Let me use an arrow, hold on. The first letter, <clears throat> the first letter is missing. There's no letter here. You see it? You cannot take a letter from the name. The name will stay always the same if it's part of it. But because this does not have nothing to do with the name. Allah is al la God la. Here they have to take it off because alhamdulillah li mean to. La is the name of their God. In Arabic, lil, lil, mean two, two. So, even their God name, they do not know. I, I am the one who's teaching them. You ask the Muslim, they say to you, if this is the first time we hear it. But it's in front of you for centuries. They're just blind, you know, just Allah. Everything the Muslim they have about the religion is stupid. everything they have. Like when Muhammad and he says to you, ask any Muhammad and they will say to you, Muhammad was illiterate, right? And the other day, a guy in the in the comment, he says, Christian Prince, take a stand. Do Muhammad know how to write, how to read or not? My friend, I don't care for me, Muhammad and they believe that he do not know how to write, how to read. So you debate them in what they believe, not your believe. Your belief doesn't count for them. If Muhammad he know how to read, if you say, no, I believe it, who cares? They don't believe in that. So you debate them about their belief. However, when the Muslim, they say that Muhammad was an illiterate, why? Because the Quran says so. But where the Quran says Muhammad did not know how to read? Nowhere. The word Ummi is the word Gomai, you know, in the Hebrew, which mean, the one who is outsider, the one he is not from the people of God, the one who do not have scriptures. And the stupid Quran confirmed that. Read carefully with me. Chapter 2, verse number 78, it says, And there are among them illiterate who know not the book. Do you see? So illiterate is not about a person who do not know how to write. This is the word Ummi. This is the same word described Muhammad. The same word. So illiteracy is not about knowing how to write, how to read. It's about not knowing the book. Illiterate about God. And Muhammad is illiterate about God. He is a pagan. That's why this guy Uthman was saying, he do not know who is Gabriel. He do not even know who is Gabriel. So he is very illiterate about God. I mean, have you ever heard of somebody, if he, they claim that he followed Abraham, he never heard of, uh, of Gabriel? So why he is illiterate? He is illiterate because he do not know the book. He is a pagan, right? And then you find this is in many verses in the Quran, but you know, they are dummy, what you can say. It doesn't matter how much, this is why the Quran keeps saying, as an example, chapter three, verse number 20, it says, the illiterate and the people of the book. Do you see it? We, why we are called people of the book? Because we are not illiterate. Because we have a book. But doesn't mean that every Christian at that time, he knew how to write, how to read. Usually, poor kids from poor families don't have education. They don't have a chance for somebody to teach them. So, people of the book present that they are, and not the people who they are illiterate. This is why the verse here says, the people of the book and those who they are illiterate. And this is a chapter 3, verse number 20, as you see. But... It doesn't matter how much you explain to the Muhammadan. That said, they are stuck. Muhammad is illiterate. And they think that this will serve their agenda to claim that the Quran, how the Quran can be made by illiterate. But the Quran is a stupid book. And Muhammad is not even writing anything. He is just saying. Anyone can say. And as you see, 
the more we dig in the Quran, the more we find that this is stupid. You know, just to show you how stupid this Quran is, it says here that the religion for Allah is Islam. Translation here is submission, which is a lie. Islam is not submission, Islam means surrender. Okay, so if the religion for Allah is Islam, why Allah? He keep calling us Nasara. And why he keep calling the Jews Jews? And why he say the Christian and the Jews, they will go to heaven? If the religion is Islam only. So you should not call us Nasara. You should not call us Jews. Stupidity. Actually, there's a guy, he posted in the comment section before we go live in the previous video. Uh, he posted this verse. Let us see. When you read it right away, you will see how stupid this verse is. So Allah, he say in the Quran, today, I completed my favor upon you, and I accepted religion for you as a religion, Islam as a religion. If you go in the comment, you will see my answer. I said, Abdul, so are you saying that you're a stupid God? He completed Islam in chapter 5, verse number 3. Are we listening? When you say today, this day, I perfected your religion for you. And this is in chapter 5, verse number 3. That means any verses after that, they are a fabrication because Islam became perfect. I completed my favor upon you. Not I'm, I'm completing, I completed. Today, this day, read carefully. It's a point of something happened. This day, Islam become perfect. This day, I completed my favor upon you. This day, I chose Islam as a religion for you. So what is the point of the rest of the chapters? The only way for this verse to be accurate is to write it as a last sentence in the book. The end, you know, like when you watch a movie, it says the end. This is what this verse is saying, the end. This is something Muhammad should say when he is dying, maybe. But this is a chapter 5, verse number 3. So how today I perfected Islam for you, completed my favor upon you, and then the guy keep talking, look, there's hundreds of chapters after that now. The Quran is 114 chapters. This is chapter 5, and this is in the beginning of chapter 5. Verse number 3. So you can count even chapter 5 as part of it. So we have, you take only the first four chapters, and that make it 114 chapters. There's no need for them, because the verse here says it's completed, that's it. So if Allah is a stupid, then I can take this as a sign of stupidity because you say it's complete, it's perfect, but you keep talking to complete, to perfect. And later you give us, the, you know, about how where to pray, and later where to pray, and later the hijab, and later about fasting. So I thought Islam is became perfect today. Look like it's not. Actually, even Muhammad, when he was dying, according to some Muslims, they say, that he said to his companion, bring me a paper and a pen, and if I write this for you, you will never be misled after today. That's mean Islam never been perfected yet. And then Omar, he forbid them from giving him a paper. He says, your prophet qad hajar al-rasul, which means he lost his mind. Can you believe it? How Omar insulted Muhammad? Qad hajar al-rasul. He became crazy. He is in the in the in the in the in the death stage, and he is saying things doesn't make sense. He said, "Don't give him paper. Don't give him a pen." And this is another sign that he know how to write, how to read. Because what do you mean, bring me a paper and a pen? And 
Muhammad is saying, if I write this for you, you will never be lost after that. Then the question is, why the Muslim did not give him a paper? What you will lose is your profit. And if the Quran is completed, why you are saying, give me a paper and a pen, and so I will write you something, and that will not make you mislead ever. So the Quran is not completed, and the proof is that hadith. <coughs> Yeah, exactly. This is what Omar he said. He says Muhammad become Joe Biden. You know, this guy he didn't know what he's saying. He said he said to them, "We have the Quran. So what the Quran for?" And I I believe that Omar he was afraid that Muhammad he will write something about maybe who was the caliphate will be after him. You know what I mean? So he was terrified. Maybe he will say, "Don't make Omar caliphate." Maybe you know it's something he don't like. He was afraid. What the Muslim will lose if they give their prophet the last wish? I mean, even a guy who is sentenced to death in jail, they ask him, what is your last wish? Muhammad making a wish and he's their prophet. Give me a paper, give me a pen. They refuse. Yeah, exactly, this verse, it only can be correct if you have it at the last sentence in the Quran. Like when Jesus said, it's completed. He was talking about what? The mission for the cross. So the last word he said on the cross is, com is completed. That makes sense. Let us see this Filipino guy who called me, he sent me a message. Let us see what he said. Uh, <clears throat> okay, this guy looked like he is. I hope soon this guy who called me, he will leave Islam, you know? All of them in the beginning, they argue, they get angry. But then they start to say, and they see the reference, go study it, never listen, don't, you see, you listen to me, don't take what I say as a truth, consider it even as a lie if you want, but do, do check it out. If it turned to be true, then you leave Islam, I mean, this is garbage. Don't take what I say, check what I say. And this is for the case for all of you, you know, you Christians, anyone, when we say something to you, we show it to you, check it out. If it's true, then it's true. If it's not, then the guy is lying, whoever he is. Would you say that Islam is like uh, uh, Italian mafia, my friend? Maybe you do not know that the word jizya, the word jizya, you know what, what mafia do? The mafia, uh, like, you know, you know, you heard about protection, right? Pay or we burn your store, pay or we shoot you. Many people do not know that this is taken from the Quran. When the Muslims, they occupy part of Italy in Europe, they practice the jizya on the Christians. They collect every other week or other day money from the stores, from the business, from the farmers. They take their chicken, they take their goats, you know, they go and take percentage they don't take everything because if they take everything the people would die and then how they will make money more for them they don't want them to die they want them to be like the cow who make generate money for them so when the european and the italian they kicked out the muslims the criminals they took over the business of the muslims and then they start practicing pay for protection And that is called the jizya. Pay or die. You have to pay. So the Islamic, the, the mafia is born of, of, of Islam.
No, no, this is not ransom. Ransom is a different story. Ransom is like, you know, you're a prisoner of war or something. Here, this is different. Here, the, every person who is living under Islamic rules, he is not a Muslim, he is a Christian or a Jew, he have to pay, otherwise he will be killed. As simple as that, you are paying to stay alive. And the Quran described that those people, they have to pay and they have to be humiliated. Uh, this is why Muhammad he forbid the Muslims from practicing farming did you ask yourself why? if the Muslims they can't practice farming so who was feeding the Muslims? how do Muslims eat? if there's no farmers the Christians are the farmers They take their chicken, they take, this is what the Turkish used to do in Romania, you know, the, the old man. This is why Romania, until now they are poor, because the Turkish, they suck their blood. The old man soldiers, they come to the villages. You have 10 goats, they would take nine, they will leave you one, so next year you will have more. Here you see, uh, let me show you the, uh, the hadith about I'm trying to remember the hadith about uh, Muhammad forbidding Uh, let us see where's the hadith <laughs> Muhammad he says that the one who have such a thing uh, machines for for farming this house will be humiliated. And then you ask yourself, why in the world? Let me show you the hadith. Here we go. So Muhammad, he entered a house and he found equipment for farming. So Muhammad, he says, any house, those things will enter into it. Humiliation will enter it. Because Muhammad, he want Criminals, he want gang, he don't want farmers who live in peace. I saw some agricultural equipment and said, I heard the prophet saying, there is no house in which those equipment enters, except that Allah will cause humiliation to enter it. Do you see it? Let me share the link with you. So next time, if I mention it, you can help me to make it fast and you can post it. <clears throat> Here you notice that Muhammad is a very filthy gang member and who was feeding the Muslims all those centuries? It was us. They don't work. 
They are the gang. If farming is forbidden, who was feeding them? How they eat? The answer is very simple. The Christians, the Jews, whoever, the Hindus, they are the slaves who will feed the Muslims. Muslims don't work. And for sure now we are talking about the, the glorious time where they were the Muslim, they were the victorious, and they occupy the land and nobody dare to question what they do. Not now. Was he so smart or was evil demon possessed? Well, let us say Muhammad is both. He is not so smart, actually, he's so stupid. But let us say a stupid man, he come in a perfect time. But to make it simple for you. Now we hear the news about the Russian, they might invade Ukraine, right? That is a very bad news. Two Christian countries, they are going to kill each other. So let us say, God forbid, Ukraine and Russia both have equal, let us say for the sake of argument, you know, just to give you an example, they have equal power and they keep killing each other for the coming 200 years. Erdogan, after they finish each other, he will attack both, occupy them. And this is what happened exactly. The Persian and the Roman, they were fighting for more than 300 years. When Muhammad, he came and he had an army, it was a perfect time where both were exhausted. They are totally dead. They don't have men even left to fight. So Muhammad, he came in a perfect time to conquer. Actually, even Muhammad in his lifetime, he went to Tabuk, he tried to conquer the Roman, he could not, he returned, he lost. Then the Caliphate after him, they took advantage of the weakness of the Roman and the Persian, and they continued the mission. So let us say they came in a very bad time for mankind. A liar saying that this jizya is a tax. Well, do you pay jizya yourself? You don't. And it says you have to pay it with humiliation. Secondly, you occupy our land and you want to take money from me, you coward, son of muta. Based on this, American, they occupy Iraq. They should force every citizen to pay jizya or die. Hypocrite liars, you know, they have no dignity. We have a bunch of trolls here. All right. I think we have enough time for today. And don't forget to download the previous videos. And if you have any brave Abdul, he called himself Ustaz, even if he's a Balut vendor, we will come then to call us and you watch and see what will happen. You know? Just watch and see what will happen. People will laugh. All the complaint they speak about, I mean, I saw even Muslim, they say Christian Prince, he don't speak Arabic. I mean, they, they, are, they are so desperate. They are so stupid desperate. We're not the Muslim always Ottoman bread. I don't know what you mean. I have no idea what you just said. Yeah, even if you have a, because all of them, they are Balut vendor. None of them, he knows what he's talking about. You see, all those, even those who, even those who speak Arabic, like Mimi, Susu, Fifi, Dudu, all of them, they have no idea what Islam is about, and they try to defend based on lying. And the more they lie, the more we laugh. Like when they make a video for uh, a Prophet, Prophet, yes. Yes. The Prophet here, he got you busted. This hadith is sahih. Which hadith? The sun set and the, the throne of Allah. I suppose now he got him busted. So they are dummy, low IQ, mental, you know. Uh, the, the question is, how many mental 
they believe in the mental lies. I mean, we show here clear proofs of how stupid Islam is. But in the same time, you need to ask yourself, why I see it so clear, it's so stupid, but the guy who called me just like an hour ago, the Filipino guy, he don't see that the Quran saying that the, the sperm became congealed, that the blood is, okay, is, is wrong. Why he don't see it? A human being, he have a spot in his brain where he throw, it's like a trash can. Anything is harmful, anything is painful in your memory, in anything. You dump it in that dark area because you don't want to think about it. So when you show a Muslim how stupid his religion is, automatically he dump it inside the trash can in his brain because it hurt. The same as any sad memory any of any of us we have. So if you have something you don't want to remember, you don't want to talk about, you dump it and you close, you lock it. That's what the Muslims do. You show him right away how stupid it is. In the beginning, so they, they, this is what they do. So you keep showing them, and then they dump it in the trash can. But then one day, the trash can does not, cannot take no more. It's overloaded. That day, where this Abdul, he will leave Islam. Because his trash can is overloaded. Right? <clears throat> Anyway, <laughs> I think we have enough for today. And already we are here for two hours, 26. And I can see my throat is not doing good. So if I don't come tomorrow, you know, but I adopt, I will be able to resist coming tomorrow. You know me. But uh, I will try. I will try not to come tomorrow because I need a break for my throat. <laughs> I can't tell my throat is very dry from talking. Uh, but I'm so glad, you know, like, this is the good thing about you too. You finish, you go to sleep, still people are watching, and they are learning. Even the same person who watched the same program, he can replay it again, so he can understand more, or can take reference, or etc. Right? Uh, we are glad for the opportunity we have. And today, actually, I experienced this uh, Zoom, and I found that Zoom is very silly, you know? I mean, look, it's like a bathroom. Five, six, seven people talking at the same time. And there's, it's out of control. So I don't like really this Zoom thing. It's, you know, it sounds stupid for me. I think YouTube is way better than this program Zoom. And as long as it's working for us, we will be using it until something better comes. But for now, I don't see anything better than YouTube to use for what we do. I want to say thank you guys for being here. May the Lord bless you. And if you know any Balut vendor who claim to be Ustaz, because all of them they are Balut vendor at the end of the day, they are liars. They have no education about the religion. They are just making money. And they always make money from the fool. The Bible says always, you have to examine the spirit, examine the spirit. And any spirit who deny the Father and the Son, any spirit who deny Jesus he is the Christ, any spirit who deny the crucifixion of Jesus is satanic spirit. So even if you are a person who don't have education, when you see such a spirit, it is satanic spirit. And this is the easiest way to fight the devil. A person who denied that Jesus is the son of God, that is a satanic spirit. And that will destroy all the lies you can hear from anyone, including priests, because we have some priests, sadly, they are politically correct and they lie. And they say we and Muslim worship the same God. There's many of them. When the Bible says it clearly that anyone who denied Jesus is Antichrist, so how we worship the same God if their God is an Antichrist? If their God is the one who says Jesus is not the Son of God? Those priests they will burn in hellfire. And they will be punished severely by the Lord. For two reasons. First, they are liars. Number two, 
they are deceiving Christians. We don't worship the same God. Even our heaven is different. Jesus said he and she, they will not get married. They will be the same as angels. How we can have the same God if their heaven is full of virgins and sex and porn? Even our God has a spirit. Their God does not have a spirit. So even the nature of God is, a, is different. Our God is a spirit. Our God has a son. And their God has none. He is not a spirit and he has no son. How we can have the same God? So those priests who lie to you, they are the most evil. Ugly. Satanic one. They are more dangerous than Muhammad himself because they call themselves priests. That's why the Bible, the Bible says, Jesus, he said, be aware of false teachers who will come to you in the clothes of a sheep, but they are wolves. Those are the child molesters. Those are the thieves. Those are the liars. They are doing business. They don't fear God. They want to make money. When you fight Islam, everything fights you. You see here in YouTube, we cannot collect donation. Why? Because I'm speaking against Islam. If I am a Muslim, if I'm Mimi Hijab, everything is good. As simple as that. And this is why they stop even the same for David Wood, right? So they are fighting us. Atheists and Mohammedan, they are united. Liberals, they are in bed with the devil Muhammad. Both, they are fighting to stop us. In the top of that, they bring you false priests to join their forces. So do you see how the fight is complicated and how the satanic power is powerful? Priest, Atheist. I mean, what, what, what Muslims and atheists, they share together? They share a lot. Both, they are Antichrist. This is why you see here, this potato here, he brought this atheist to help him against Christianity. Both of them, they share one thing, they are Antichrist. But for us, we will be always victorious. It doesn't matter really what they do. And look at them. Thank you, Lord. We demolish all their lies, and we are laughing. And people live in Islam left and right. And they are screaming, people live in Islam. You saw nothing yet. More and more to come. Thank you. God bless you. And see you soon again. Take care. I mean, again, he, he doesn't know who Gabriel is, right? Because he didn't come from an Abrahamic faith. The people of Mecca were pagan. The Quran has mentioned if this book was from other than God, they would have found in it many contradictions. If a book is without contradictions, that has no bearing on whether it comes from God or not. I've had phone books that are inerrant, but I certainly don't think God gave them. <laughs> that we believe without understanding. The brothers asked a very important question that most of the scholars say that listening to music, watching movies, and most of the television programs, they're haram. So how can we have fun? Let me tell you, brother, at the outset, that having fun is permitted in Islam as long as the fun is halal fun. <laughs> that the standard narrative has holes. The prophet tells us because Satan or the devil sleeps over our nostrils. Those who oversleep and not pray Fajr on time, Satan urinates in their ears. I really do think Jesus was crucified and that he really was dead and buried. He, he thought that he was a son of God in the sense that he was specially chosen by God. I think Jesus really did think he was going to be the Messiah, the future king of Israel. I mean, that is, after all, why they crucified him. 